Rev up your engines. Kenneth Case to Scotty. I really like my 2017 Chevy Cruze Premier RS. I've never had a problem. Throw out my ownership. Should I keep it? Thanks. Well, it's a 2017. It's only a year and a half old. <laughs> You better not have any problems. With it. You might as well keep it, because I'll tell you the truth. If you try selling that thing now, you'll see how much money you will lose. Uh, what you owe on it versus what it's worth. It would be foolish to sell it now. Maybe you got a good one that's going to last. I never advise anybody to buy it. And I got a customer with one. He's got a picture of Mickey Mouse in the back window because he sued him under the lemon lawn for some weird reason. They gave him back $3,000, and that was it. They wouldn't take the car back. So, you know, But if it's last, drive it around, because you would lose your shirt if you sold it now. See, Okay, says Scotty, I'm looking into buying a 2004 GMC Canyon with 216,000 miles from a mechanic. Should I buy it? Okay, well, it depends. If it was the mechanic's vehicle and he took care of it, not a bad idea. But if he's selling it for somebody else, you kind of think. Now, the Canyon was kind of a bizarre truck. Uh, they weren't that bad. I mean, look, that thing's got a lot of miles. It's still running. I just uh, wouldn't pay too much for it. It's a 15-year-old GMC pickup truck with 216,000 miles. If you're looking for a knock-around truck to haul a little bit of stuff around, why not? But just don't pay too much. It's an old GMC truck with a lot of miles on it. LBAG says, what's your opinion on police cars? Mainly 2013 police patrol vehicle, Taurus, with a 3.7 Mustang engine with 100,000 miles on it. Well, that was a fun vehicle in its time. But the thing is, if it was a police vehicle, generally they drive them like maniacs. And they can have the heck burn out of them. And you generally expect you're going to put an engine or a transmission in them in a short period of time. But if you are thinking about buying one used, do not touch it until you get a guy like me, a professional mechanic, and going to check it out with his computer and road test it and tell you what kind of shape it's in. You want to start there if you do want to buy a vehicle like they can be fun to drive around. But of course, don't pay much for it. A used police vehicle the resale value is not that much. You don't want to pay much because, uh, you know, you're playing with dynamite. You don't know what's left with that vehicle. Why do you think the police get rid of them every so many years? <laughs> Alvaro Tejado Esteves says, Scotty, I got a 95 Volvo 940. When I start it up in the morning, it makes a metallic rattling sound when I rev it. It goes away after three, four minutes. The engine was rebuilt seven years ago. You know, what's really typical with those things is the catalytic converters rattle as they age. For some reason, they made them crappy. Inside your catalytic converter are these honeycomb pieces that have platinum in them, and that burns hydrocarbons. And as they age, especially on those vehicles, it cracks, and then they will rattle. But then when they heat up, the metal expands, and they stop rattling. Check that first off. It runs okay. It doesn't hurt anything. And a new cat for that vehicle costs an awful lot of money. Ha! <laughs> You might live with it if it is the cat rattling and it runs okay. When it doesn't run good, it will the temperature gauge will run hotter and you'll only be able to go like 55 miles an hour, not any faster. Then you know it's clogged up and you'd have to replace it then. USS Storm says, Scotty, I have an 07 Honda Civic I like coupe with rear drum brakes. Should I upgrade them to disc brakes? Okay, here's the thing. The rear brakes on that car are one thing mainly. Most of the power is stopped at the front disc. The rear drums are there so the car doesn't fishtail when you stop hard and when you corner and stop. For normal driving, those work perfectly fine and you're not going to have any problems with them. It's kind of a waste of money putting it in a little car like that. It really doesn't need it. It's a light car and disc brakes for all four wheels are more for a racing because they don't fade when you stop, go fast, stop, go fast, stop, go fast. Drums will actually stop a car just as fast one time <laughs> but in a race they aren't that's why they were first used in race cars because they're slamming them on and hitting the gas slamming them on and hitting the gas and the drum brakes was overheats where the discs wouldn't and that's why they started using them but on yours ah, you really wouldn't want to spend money for that my concho says scotty should i put fuel injection on my dodge dart 318 v8 well it's a good question but depends on what do you want to do with the thing if you're planning on selling it in the future? No, because if it's stock, that's a classic 73 Dodge Dart. You're going to lower the value by taking the factory stuff off. But if you want it to drive faster and get better gas mileage, put it on, but save all your old parts. Save the manifold, save the carburetor. Because then if you sell it at some point in the future, you can say to the guy, look, I did this because I like fuel injection. You want to go back to stock? Here's all the parts in a box. Keep them all. Don't throw any of them away. Always do that with a classic car. Never throw any old parts away. And if you want to modify it to your heart's content, you're going to keep it for years? Go right ahead. Just keep the old parts. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.